Hello, this video is a brief overview of the Prexion 3D fusion and stitching features combining multiple cone beam data sets into one. In this example, we have taken three cone beam data sets, a right, a central, and a left, and we've combined them from uh, three separate scans and we fused and stitched them together so we have uh, the axial, coronal, sagittal, and the 3D all fused and stitched together. Here in this three data set example, notice the areas of common overlap between all three of the separate scans, uh, as you can see highlighted in the uh, elliptical areas. Uh, this is achieved, of course, when we're doing the actual scan with the field of view setup and the scout x-rays to allow a little bit of this overlapping to get some common dentition. This new data set of the stitched uh, three data sets is fully functional for the slicing ability, uh, rotation of 3D, uh, if one wants to um, access measurements, or adjust window level settings. It is all fully functional within this new uh, data set that's fully DICOM compatible and can be exported to third party software. Okay, let's step back a few steps and discuss how we obtained all this data. And of course, how we put it all together. The fusion of data sets are done two at a time. Here in this example, you can see that we have fused together the right and central uh, data sets. And of course, uh, this is the stitching completion. So what is to occur now is we would take this stitch data set and then we would apply the left side to this uh, data set as uh, an additional stitch. After the cone beam scans are performed on the Prexion 3D scanner, they display here in the patient viewer list. So in this example, we've got the right side and we'll take the 512 slices and we'll add them to the multi-data list. Next, we go to the central portion, and we'll add that also to the multi-data list. Here, the multi-data list icon is displayed, so to load this, we click on the multi-data icon, and it's in the process of loading. So here in the multi-data list page, we have our right side in the vertical, and the central with the corresponding axial, coronal, and sagittal uh, planes, respectively. The next step, we apply the fusion function. Here we have the fusion tab indicated by the little blue and gold uh, tab right here. We click it and then we get our fusion of the two studies into this third vertical column that where we can apply uh, manipulations and adjustments. Now notice in this third column we have one of the data sets, in this case data set 2, because it's highlighted. With that is going to be highlighted with the uh, color. So we have a, a color uh, scheme that we could um, have some contrast against from data set 1. Now I like to have data set 2, the frame that's colored. Uh, you have, uh, very, uh, can quickly change that to data set 1 to have that color as well. So it's, it's kind of a personal preference, really. So the object here is to take the, uh, the uh, side of the um, right side here, and we'll take the axial and superimpose it. Now, the easier way to do this is to uh, double click in the axial screen. So we'll just simply double left click, and we'll load up the axial screen like this. And we're always free to go back and forth between opening the panel and closing it to get a better field of view, a larger, and then go back to the functions of the panel uh, indicated here in the right side. So to quickly align data set 2 over data set 1, I'm just going to right click the mouse and tr drag the color data set 2 to somewhat align with the data set 1. Now it's not perfect at this point, but we're just sort of beginning.
So now we're back in the NPR views, and here we'll double click on the coronal screen and load it by itself. And as before, we can right click on the color data set 2 and drag it over uh, to align uh, with data set 1. Now to fine tune the alignments and the adjustments, there's a number of things we can do. First of all, we can click on the registration tab. When we click on the registration tab, we have items uh, X, Y, and Z uh, in the data set 1 or data set 2. We can select whichever one we wish to work with. In this case, data set 2 is our uh, particular set of preference. Notice by clicking translate in the X factor, we're, or X plane, we're moving uh, left to right. Here in the Y plane, it's a mesial distal type projection that we're adjusting. As you can see in the other screens, as we adjust this to go back and forth mesially distally. The Z plane allows us to move up uh, toward the head or superior, uh, or going down uh, to inferior or toward the foot. That's what these H and F uh, symbols are uh, indicating, head and foot, or superior, inferior. Okay, rotate allows us to rotate in the uh, X plane, Y, or Z plane. As you can see, we're just letting it ride a little bit, so you get an understanding of how that is uh, manipulated. Here we are rotating in the Y plane. And the Z plane, just to give you an idea of how these these items are are used and function. At the bottom of the screen here, in the blue arrows indicators, if one wishes to move in one degree increments, that's possible. Also, the up and down arrows can be moved, uh, up and down or uh, left and right, uh, as well as a magnification factor by one percent up or down. Now this number can be changed too if one pr uh, wishes to use a, an integer that's uh, not 0.5. You can customize whatever integer that uh, you wish or select a different one to, to move these arrows up and down uh, according to the, that, that, uh, that numerical value. And of course the images can always be sliced. Here I'm using the middle wheel of the trackball uh, so one can slice freely uh, at any section along the uh, length of the uh, dentition. Here in the sagittal plane, we are going to just uh, quickly demonstrate the uh, one degree angle motion as we uh, click and uh, get a better alignment. And I can always right click again and reset uh, and make adjustments to align both of the upper and lower dentition uh, and apply uh, the necessary adjustments that uh, are made to align these. Of course, don't forget the 3D image. One can use that as reference as one makes adjustments and uh, you can see how the uh, 3D gets a little bit better aligned uh, when we just uh, move back and forth. So please use your 3D image as well uh, in the assessment of all three NPR views plus the 3D. Of course, remember now, we are evaluating back and forth between all the views and the different slices to be fairly certain that we have a, a good alignment set uh, before we actually do our stitch procedure. Okay, and for the purpose of demonstration, if we are satisfied with our fusion, what we do is we click the stitch icon, and then on the bottom, we take our two fused data sets and we click on stitch, and the stitch will perform the uh, stitching together. It takes about a minute, and then the two data sets are stitched together. And when the stitch is completed, just as we've seen before, we have the right side and the central that are stitched together as one data set.
So for the left stitch, we take the right and central stitch that we, we just had completed, we add it to the multi-data list, and we go up to the left side, and we click the left side, we take the, the 512 slices, add it to the multi-data list, and then we load up those two data sets together. So here's our right and central stitch data set on the left side. Oh, actually on the right side here. And this is going to be our left side of the patient that was scanned. So pretty much the same steps here. Click the Fusion tab. Fusion loads. Left click and drag data set 2 over data set 1. Don't worry about perfection at this point, just generally get it lined up. Do the same for coronal. Make your adjustments or rotations. Same for the sagittal screen. Double left click, loaded by itself. Slice to find the area of overlap. Right click. One can go back to the smaller screen and use the registration, rotate, translate, make the adjustments until one's fully satisfied. Remember to check your 3D screen as well. When fully assessed and completed, click the stitch icon click the lower fusion and stitch icon itself. Once that's completed, wait approximately one minute for that to be completed. You'll find the new stitch data set in the patient list page in the series list. Highlight the complete stitch data set. Click the load tab. And notice we've done a few of them. One's been re-sliced and we've done a couple of other practice ones. So. So as we load the data set, and as we've seen before, all three data sets are totally stitched together in a finished product. Thank you for your time, and best wishes from all of us at Prexium.